What's up YouTube? It's time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. Hope you all are doing well. I am taking a slight break from all the work just to put up a video. You gotta do something you enjoy every now and then and I enjoy doing these. Uh, today's match is a battle I had against Nihia. I believe that this was a passerby battle, I want to say. I had a weird team here. No real team synergy. I just picked a bunch of things that I wanted to use. Um, and in this battle, we get to see why Mega Aerodactyl is such a threat. Now, I am using a quite a pretty defensive team actually, with Mega Absol and Clauncher being my main offensive presences here. Um, Gligar is defensive. Uh, we also have uh, physically defensive Gligar, physically defensive um, Forges with Aromatherapy, and I believe also a physically defensive Tyrantrum, and of course my specially defensive Go Goat. Uh, so that, those are all things that are happening. No idea necessarily why I decided to go quite so bulky at the time, but it was an interesting match all the same. Now, of course, I cannot stay in against a Blastoise with a Gligar. It's just it, the Skull, the Ice Beam, he has too many things to hit me with. I went on to Go Goat hoping that he didn't burn me, but of course, that, that's not really a thing that happens with Scald. Scald obviously has like a 90% burn chance, right? Only when it's being used against you, though. That's how that works. Uh, knowing that he was probably going to switch, still not wanting to take a Horn Leech, uh, I went for the switch of my own because I was expecting him to hopefully go out into something different. But he actually goes out into Bisharp, which I didn't want to get hit by an Iron Head. So now I'm going to go back out into Gligar. So quite a little bit of switching there. But Gligar takes that Iron Head pretty well especially for him being life orbed. Uh, since I can just roost those hits off, he has no reason to stay in unless he has Swords Dance, and even then I can hit him with an Earthquake or a knockoff like I do here. Now I do hit Blastoise with a knockoff, which is really, really nice. Getting rid of leftovers on a bulky Pokemon like Blastoise is fantastic. Now last time I switched into Go Goat, something that I tend to do if I switch into one Pokemon the first time, I will switch into a different Pokemon the second time just to kind of test my opponent. Um, I'm able to get rid of that burn on Gogo, which is nice because I do I would like those physical attacks uh, to hit some of his Pokemon with, and um, those that burn cuts into that a good bit. Toxicking my uh, Forges, of course, is not going to matter too much just because I have Aromatherapy. I was expecting him to protect right here, which is why I decided to switch back out to Gogo, but he switches as well. So we need to get some entry hazards up to discourage some of the switching because good grief but he goes out into Magnazone I don't know if he expected me to have Earthquake or not I knew I could take anything that he wanted to go for even HP fire so I decided it'd be best to just you know stay in an attack but he definitely predicts that and goes out into Aerodactyl which is quite unfortunate I don't really have anything I want to switch into Mega Aerodactyl uh, Gligar can take hits from it but only two so this is the type of thing where it's like, well, I just gave him a Hone Claws boost. I could have stayed in and hit him with a Rock Slide. It would not have KO'd, though. Um, and, of course, I'm also running the chance of missing the Rock Slide. Uh, so I thought Gligar was my better bet here. If I could Toxic it, just rack up a little bit of Toxic damage, and then hopefully finish him off with Absol Sucker Punch, it would be kind of a little bit easier to play around it. Now, unfortunately, Gligar does go down to two stone edges from the amount of HP that he was at. Uh, and I'm going to be able to switch in Go-Go here. You don't normally see Mega Aerodactyl with flying-type moves, outside of maybe Sky Drop and VGC. But he definitely surprised me with Aerial Ace, because I knew um, uh, a stone edge wouldn't KO, and an Earthquake definitely wouldn't KO. Uh, so I was just going to hopefully whittle him down some more, but he definitely surprised me with that. Now, going out into Mega Absol here, I know that I'm not faster, even if the speed did happen to kick in before the Mega Evolution 
um, on the next turn. But I really did think I could take him out from that range with a Sucker Punch, and I was just wrong. Uh, fortunately, I do put him in range to be KO'd by the Toxic, but he still took out three of my Pokemon with one of his. That's not... If you had a buy one, get one, get three free coupon, not a good deal if you're having to give up three of your own things just to buy something. Uh, but we do get Mega Aerodactyl out of the way. Double downs are the best types of downs. On the double down, I went on into my Tyrantrum, expecting Will-O-Wisp from the Delphox. I went back on into my Floridus, whom I knew I could basically wall it anyway. Even if you went for Psyshock, I do have max defense on this build. So uh, this one's a little different from my Yellow Flower Floridus, which is a modest max HP, max special attacker one. I still need to do another one that's timid, max special attack, max speed. Uh, but seeing the damage from Psyshock is a little bit, um, I guess, good to see there. Because I know that he can't KO me. I can get rid of my poisoning and get my wish. Which means we are kind of back to where we were, except for now I'm not poisoned. Which is fantastic, really. Now right here he goes for Solar Beam. I think he was definitely predicting me to switch into my Clauncher right there. Uh, which I actually went to the Pokemon screen and considered switching into Clauncher. Uh, the reason that that Power Herb um, kind of matchup for Delphox is interesting is because of Delphox's special ability, or hidden ability rather, called Hit Magician, where it takes the item of its opponent when it's not holding an item if it attacks the opponent. So he gets my leftovers, is what happens here, basically. Uh, and I, the only reason I stayed in and went for Moonblast is because I was just kind of scouting. Um, I guess I could have protected and then he would have just wasted his power herb, maybe? I don't know. But since now he has my leftovers, and now I know his moveset more or less, I feel a little bit more comfortable switching on. I wish I still had my leftovers there. But I know he's not going to go for Solar Beam now, and I don't want to try switching in my Tyrantrum because the will o -Wisp threat is still present. Uh, so I do get my Clauncher in on the will o -Wisp, which is preferred to the Psy Shock because of, I just don't want the extra damage. And of course I'm Scarf, so I know I can outspeed, because um, of course he's been switching up his moves. Now Delphox, fantastic special offense, shines through right there, as it actually is able to live the Mega Launcher Stab super effective water poles. What the heck, Delphox? Not allowed to be that bulky. Maybe I need to take another look at you, sir. Sir, in a dress. Hey, not gonna knock it. Where would you want? Um, I do get out of that situation, though, with the Delphox going down. I knew I could outspeed Magnezone, but Magnezone can have sturdy. It is just naturally decently bulky. Um, yeah, so I wasn't expecting to take it out. He just goes for Flash Cannon on the off chance that I switch back into Delphox, which is a good move. I would have died at the end of that turn either way. And of course, Flash Cannon would have also hit my Tyrantrum. Now, Tyrantrum comes out here. He is definitely uh, um, a pretty slow Magnezone, maybe max HP, max special attack or something like that, because I actually outspeed. But I am running Life Orb on this build, even though I have the Stealth Rocks and all that good stuff. Uh, I know I can't outrun Garchomp uh, without Sticky Web or something like that, so I just decided to switch out into um, my Floridus, which I think, looking back on it, was probably a misplay. If I had stayed in and then gotten back out into Floridus, maybe I could have done um, the requisite amount of damage with a Moonblast. I'm not really sure, since it's an offensive build. But he's able to easily take me out with a critical hit, Earthquake. I don't think the crit mattered. Uh, especially because um, he wasn't switching moves, so he might have been Scarfed or Bandit anyway. But, nonetheless, still a good match there. All he had left was Bisharp um, and Blastoise, I think. Which I believe I could have... I know I could have handled Bisharp with Tyrantrum, and Blastoise couldn't touch Florges, so... Maybe if I had played that in game a little bit more securely there, we would have had a different outcome. But there is definitely more fodder right there for seeing how Mega Aerodactyl can... Dismantle some teams if it forces a switch. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this battle video here, and I hope you guys are having a good start to your week. I will be back with you all for another video on Friday, and in the meantime, stay frosty, my friends. Bye now.